Hi, everyone. Welcome to our mindfulness series. This is our first of a couple, and we have Carmeet here, who is a mindfulness practitioner, and she's going to be running through um, some mindfulness practices with us today, and she'll give more of a, an overview of her own practice and biography of her own life uh, or practice more so. Um, but before we begin, we'll just kind of go through um, our intro slides here. Here is a, an image of the AGO, beautiful facade. Um, and the AGO is actually open right now. So if you all get a chance to please do come and visit. I'm actually here right now. Next slide. And then just before we begin, we'll start with a land acknowledgement. So the land the AGO is on is Mishisagi Anishinaabe Territory, Mississauga. It is also governed by a treaty, treaty between the Mississauga of the Credit and the Canadian government. Toronto is Mishisagi Anishinaabe Territory. It has also been occupied by other Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee, and Wendat Confederate seats. Now I think I'll actually just hand it over to Carmeet um, and we'll begin today's session. Awesome. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Uh, welcome to Slow Looking Mindfully. I'm Karmit Ifra, a dancer, a yoga and Pilates instructor, and a mindfulness ambassador. Growing up as a child, I found dance and movement a way to enter a world of possibilities and an outlet to escape from everyday stressors, emotions that I was withholding, found an expression through movement that at time kept, kept me lucid. Have you ever felt any form of art, a book, and an art piece offered something of healing or nurturing? How did it manifest in your own body? With this in mind, I'm grateful to be able to connect with you today to explore and share ideas together about our Canadian artists. There is nothing to get right or wrong, just enjoy the process of your own discoveries. Without too much effort, immerse yourself in it and let it take you wherever it takes you. We will start with introduction to mindfulness, followed by a gentle movement and body scan to prepare ourselves physically and emotionally to enjoy the process of slow looking mindfully. What is mindfulness? Mindfulness originated from the ancient Eastern and Buddhist philosophy. It is the awareness that arises through paying attention on purpose and non-judgmentally to the unfolding of experience moment to moment. Mindfulness is about observing our thoughts, feelings, and body sensations we are already experiencing and acting on them with discernment, kindness, and compassion. The objective of slow looking mindfully is to view the experience with being impartial, open, non-judgmental, curious, patient, and unafraid is what links mindfulness with art. The desire to express oneself creatively relates to a need to feel seen, heard, and understood. All of these things together can build up resilience, support, and emotional well-being, and help people feel more in control even during a time of chaos and uncertainty. We're gonna start with a gentle movement. So find yourself in a comfortable seated position. You can lean back on a chair if that's something that you need, you feel you need to do. And let's just take a couple inhales through the nose, out the mouth. Let's inhale through the nose together and give it a nice sigh. <sighs> And one more like this. You can close your eyes as well. Inhale. And out through the mouth. Awesome. Let's make some shoulder rolls here. Just opening the chest and squeezing the shoulder blades as the shoulder moves back. And then the shoulders roll forward. A couple movements here. Awesome. Keep sitting nice and tall. You can sit on the edge of your sofa or chair. Let's drop the head heavy. And take three breaths, noticing the extension at the back of the neck. We're going to sway left ear to left shoulder. 
and slowly to the opposite direction. The head is like a pendulum moving side to side. Let's keep the left ear to the left shoulder and add the left arm just for weight. And the opposite arm, which you might not be able to see is hanging, hanging off my chair, pulling in towards gravity. And slowly we're gonna move the right ear to the right shoulder and add the arm for gravity here as well. And the opposite side just hangs for a couple moments. And come back to center. Let's hold the left hand, hold the edge of our chair or sofa and take a side stretch. You can let the head hang and draw. And moving back through center to the opposite direction. And again, let the hand hang, let the head hang and drop. Come back into center. Our final movement will be a twist. So let's bring the right hand onto your leg or thigh, the opposite hand behind you holding a chair or a sofa, lengthening the spine and just twisting a little bit towards the back, keeping the pelvis nice and strong here and the crown of the head reaching up and back to center. And we'll switch left hand onto the leg, right hand behind you, lengthening again and twisting to the opposite direction. Awesome, and come back into center. And I hope we're already feeling a little bit more um, relaxed. We're gonna go through a body scan. So again, find yourself in a comfortable seated position. You do not need to lean forward or back, just feeling nice and relaxed in wherever you are at. Sitting in a comfortable position, allowing both soles of your feet to connect to the floor. Closing your eyes or softening the gaze downwards beyond the ridge of your nose. Noticing the sensation of your breath in your body. Where can you find the breath without judgment? Noticing the cool air through the nostrils on the in-breath and the warm air out the nostrils on the out-breath. Relax your shoulders. Bring your awareness to the support of gravity as your body held by the earth and the contact of the pelvis and the back of the legs with the surface. Allow the legs and pelvis to relax. Bring your attention to the feet, their contact with the floor, noticing the sensation of the sole of your feet, the toes and the top of the feet in contact with the shoes or socks you're wearing. Let the feet relax. Now bring your attention to the length of your spine up to the crown of your head, breathing into the space between each and every vertebrae. Let your spine relax. On the next inhale, bring your awareness to the length of your arms, their weight on the surface they're resting on. Notice any sensation on the palm and the fingers. Let the palm, fingers, arms relax. Now shift your attention to your face, noticing sensations on the forehead, the cheeks and jaw, around the eyes, around the nose, around the mouth and the throat. Let the facial muscles and throat relax. Now bring your attention to the mental space where the mind can travel and thoughts are rising and passing away like clouds in the sky. Let your mind rest in your body like the body rests on the chair, on the cushion or the floor. Let the mind open and rest. Let your thoughts come and go. Be restful, relaxed alert and attentive. Notice any bits of discomfort or 
in uncertainty, but not letting them take you over. Finally, coming back into the sensation of breathing. And when you're ready, open your eyes. We will be examining one piece of art at a time. You will have about three minutes to immerse yourself in silence with background music. I invite you to have a pen and a paper handy or a journal or a sketchbook in case you find the urge to draw or write. Then we will have a discussion and observation on each of the art pieces. Participation is highly recommended and much appreciated. A couple of tips of using um, the Zoom. So if you'd like to talk or raise your hand when you wanna share, simply click on the participation on the participants or reaction, it depends on your, um, your own computer. On the bottom of the screen and slide bar, we will open and you can click the raise hand icon at the bottom right. Mute your microphone unless you would like to participate in a conversation. Please click the mute button at the bottom of the left side of the screen. Comments and questions, you can share them with the group by clicking on the chat icon and typing your remarks. Use earphones in order to reduce echo and mitigate background noises. We highly recommend to use earphones. Thank you very much. And we will start our slides.
the image credit by um, Clarence Alfonso Gagnon, Quebec Village Street, winter 1920. Taking a note of your physical and emotional sensation, pleasant or unpleasant, without judging the experience. At the first glance, where did your eyes landed? What drew your attention? And why? Did any word or phrase, or phrase come to mind? You can add anything in the chat box or unmute yourself if you'd like to participate. And take your time. Mm -hmm. Snow day. Mm -hmm. Made me feel like I was back home in Quebec. My eye was drawn to the yellow house where the path leads the contrasting colors of the houses as well as direction. The houses point in seem to lead to. Thank you. I think someone raised their hand before. You can unmute yourself if you'd like to. My eyes follow the path that the man and the horse will be taken. Then I looked at the windows of the houses and wondered who was inside them. I felt happy, but also wondering what else there, there was in the painting inside the houses behind the mountains. Thank you. Carla, you can go ahead and voice. We can hear you. Thank you very much. I was drawn immediately to the clear skies that was at the top of the painting. Mm -hmm. And for me, there was a contrast with the snowy street, very heavy snow, reminded me of winter here in Toronto. Mm -hmm. And what it, that contrast between that clear sky and the snowy street and the effort that the man seemed to be making to have to clear the street, you know, mm -hmm. um, using, <laughs> using that horse-drawn um, bit of machinery there, it, it told me that even though things might be difficult when I look around me, you know, the snow and so on, you know, if, if we keep looking up, if we keep looking, keeping our gaze on something that's that's clear ahead of us, something that's, that's, that draws us upward, mm -hmm. we should be able to make it through the difficulties that may appear on either side. So wonderful. I really like this painting and, and that contrast between clear skies when I look up and you know the difficulty of making my, one's way through the snow and the fact that looking up, kind of gives us some clarity that we might need. Thank you so much, Carla. We have Anne added in the chat, the shadows were a lovely blue and pink. 
and Teresa, erasing indigenous folks, worldview, cultures, and the pieces, simplicities that is not so simple, seems very individually doing, doing the tasks like writing and children playing in the snow. Thank you, Teresa. Did any word or phrase come to mind? As well, um, what did we discover after we looked a bit longer? So we had three minutes to experience the painting with the music background. And at first, usually some something comes to mind at first, and then when we have the time to actually immerse ourselves and take the time to look at details, then we might be seen a little bit, we might be able to see a little bit more details. Anyone would like to share? after looking a little bit longer. Carla was mentioning she was stuck by the warm colors of the front doors. They seem to be inviting. Thank you. Margie, snowy hill in the background, people, children enjoying, maybe sliding down the hill, yelling of joy. Yes, after I've looked a little longer, I found that too, which did not appear right away. What do you wonder about this piece, place, time, and how does it relate to your own community? Sometimes when we look at something, we do have questions in our mind of uh, the exact location or does it resembles anything that I remember from the past or present. Is anything that we're wondering that we're not sure of that you would like to share and you can add in the chat box where you can raise a hand to speak If our vision was not clear, how could we see and relate to the painting? Does it make us feel anxious, frustrated? Or we allow ourselves, we allow our other senses to take over. And how would it look like? What would you hear, feel, smell? And do you feel it anywhere in your body? If anyone would like to share their experience.
may imagining yourself placing yourself in that um, art piece what senses would you what smells do you think in the environment Well, Margie um, added a comment of the questions previous to that. Snowy hill in the background, people, children enjoying, maybe sliding down the hill, yelling of joy. And then she added, who is the man on the sled? Is he a peddler? Is clearing a path? Is he rushing to an emergency? Yes, we do wonder. Anyone else would like to add to that particular question? What do we wonder? Or if our vision is, was not clear, how would we feel when, we, when we're trying to look at that piece? And do our other senses come Come and take over. What would we hear around us? If you had had a chance to place yourself in the village, where would you place yourself? What would you be wearing? What would you be doing? And what drew you to that specific area? I would personally place myself behind the little yellow house. The color just drew me right in. And I might be, actually I might be in the house, maybe doing some housework. And not actually outside in the snowy cold weather. <laughs> Lisa, I would go to the front porch of the house with a green door because of the sun is shining on it. <laughs> That's true. That's lovely. Thank you. Anyone else would like to share where would they be? What they would be doing? can see a ski hill at the background where the kids are playing. Maybe some of us would like to go and uh, maybe ski. Does this art piece remind you of any experience or time in your life? What does it mean to you? What would you think it meant to your ancestors? This piece reminds me of a small town I grew in. And the houses were really close to one another and they were really bright colored. Although there was no, no snow where I grew up, but um, just the environment, the feel, the colors reminds me back home.
And anyone else would like to to share their experience? And what do you think the artists try to amplify or project? Anyone has any anything in mind? After we had some time to examine the art, did your perspective change? Do you feel different than you did when you first had a glance? And try to describe your, the change in your body or your mind or even the way you're sitting right now, your posture, the place you're sitting on. Did anything change? Community. That's a previous uh, question. Thank you. It is a community. Does anyone feel any different from first glance to after we had some time to examine the picture, the art piece? Does it make us feel different? Our bodies changed, our breathing may be changed. Carla, looking at the children on the hill made me realize for the first time that I have a good memories now to replace my first bad experience on a snowy mountain. Recently, I enjoyed winter activities with friends. Thank you, Carla. Thank you. We'll be moving to the second uh, art piece. This is um, Clarence Alfonso Gagnon. 
by St. Paul Street, Spring Thaw 1923. Let's together, before we are starting uh, immersing more in this, in this picture and, and examining it together, let's take an inhale through the nose and out through the mouth. And one more like that, inhale through the nose and out through the mouth. We're bringing fresh eyes. Tuning to your body sensations. What did you notice at first glance? Did you feel resistance or acceptance? How did it manifest in your body? Are you judging your experience? Am I supposed to feel a certain way? Am I right? Am I wrong? And I welcome participations and welcome and encouraged in the chat box or vocally. I felt a little bit of resistance in that particular art piece. It was not as clear to me as, as the first one. The colors blended a little bit too much. I had to, uh, to engage in more focused. And the first thing that came up is the, is the blue skies that were clearer than anything else in the pictures in the picture at first. My body, as, as I felt resistance, my body tensed a little bit. Oh, the colors surprised me, Lisa says. Uh, me especially, all the pink, but eventually I accepted and liked them. Mm -hmm. That's nice. Thank you, Lisa. When we're talking about um, mentioning colors, I invite you to lean into a color that is calling out for you. Find it in your body and tune into the first feeling that this color is bringing out to you. Think about what does this color means to you? What is it brings up for you? An image, a memory, a smell, a place. Continue to stay focused on your breath and allow the body to take you where it wants. You are invited to write a word, a phrase, a sentence, or express yourself through an arm gesture, a movement, or a sound. Sometimes silence is information in the space, redirecting, redirection, direction, reflecting on what is consistently unsafe. What are the next steps? Thank you, Teresa. Anyone would like to share what the specific color that you leaned on? This is what we're told. Thank you. What they leaned on and why, or a word or a phrase that came to mind. I first leaned on actually the red, red little cart. The red drew my attention with a couple of people that were sitting there. But then I looked at the whole picture and, and overall it, it kind of pushed me a little bit away. And I had a, 
the first word I looked at it was a mess because the colors were kind of everywhere. I couldn't really redirect my eyes. After we had some time to examine the work, did your feeling change? Did your mood change? Did your posture change? And why did you think that is? I lean on the two windows, Lisa says, with the yellow trim in the White House. Mm -hmm. That's nice, thank you. And why do you think is that, Lisa? What drew, drew you to that particular area? It could bring a memory, it could bring a, an image. Open yourself up to your senses. What sounds can you hear? What scents can you smell? Does it remind you of a place in your community? I miss the feeling of sun and the snow from the other painting. Thank you, Anne. Ah. As odd enough, the other painting was winter and this one is fall. And the sun was definitely shining in the winter picture. Mm -hmm. I smell fresh for some reason, like smell of fresh, although it's fall, it's not spring, there's not any flowers coming up, but it made me feel a fresh scent especially around that yellow house for some reason when I placed myself there. Where would you place yourself in the art and what drew you to that specific area? What, you, what would you be doing and why if you decided to be an active participant in the picture, in the art painting. And I miss the feeling of sun on the snow from the painting, other painting. It's actually spring thaw, which with snow melting and mud coming through. That is true. It is spring, sorry, my mistake. I said fall, it is spring. <sighs> That's why I smell the fresh scent, because it is absolutely spring. Would you place yourself, Anne, anywhere in particular in the scene of the picture? Does it remind you anything from your present, from your past? Okay, thank you. Let's move into our, actually, no, we'll talk about the, um, the artists because the first two um, pieces of art were by the same artist. About the artist, Clarence Gagnon is best known for his rural Quebec landscape paintings and the illustrations of Louis Himmel novel, Maria Chapdelaine. Gagnon was born in Montreal, a French Canadian painter, a passionate outdoorsman, and an active promoter of Quebec handicrafts. A typical village street in, Saint in Bay St. Paul, Quebec, with the brilliant light of warm March afternoon sun lighting up 
characteristics, habitat cottages, and casting blue shadows over the last of the winter snows. Gagnon's intimate knowledge of the Quebec houses is apparent in his canvases, and he has presented all of, his, all of the interesting facts with a fine breadth and simplicity of handling. It is only in the rural Quebec that one sees the unusual children slay in the foreground of the picture, while the primitive habitat low-built work slay is an indigenous and useful conveyance, which has so far proven to be only practical winter vehicle for the Laurentian mountain district. His favorite subjects flowed from a facile brush with a smooth plan or arrangements. He never ventured into bold experiments, nor even the familiar pigmentation or broken strokes of his time, but followed the, Britain, the beaten path to the heart of many admirers. The nostalgia and partial, partiality for the past and the habitat and pioneer life, obvious in much of his work, no doubt go back to his childhood at Set Rose on the island of Montreal. We'll move to the um, second, to the third piece. Maurice Coulin, The Bird Shop, St. Laurent Street, 1920. 
So bringing awareness again to your emotional and physical sensations. What did you feel at first glance and what did you notice at first? The first thing I've noticed were the lights inside the, I'm not sure if, the, if it's houses or like a bar or some entertainment area. And that's what I've noticed at first. Do you like this work more or less the longer you spend with it? And what did you discover and how it makes you feel? Are you judging your experience of how you're feeling or reacting towards this art piece? Lisa, I also noticed the lights first and then the darkness. It feels like a sad scene. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. Do any memories or situations come to mind? Does it remind you of anything? Could be also a word, a phrase. You can draw maybe a, if you have a sketchbook, you can draw your own picture and, and uh, draw of what it reminds you of. It reminds me of walking home from school in Ottawa, though I know it's a different place. Thank you. Thank you, Melissa. What details can you see that were not obvious? Any specific colors maybe? I looked at the picture at this art piece probably a few times, um, three to five to five more times uh, in a longer extension. And I saw a blue actually that I've discovered in one of the last times that I've, uh, that I've looked at it. It blue that was mixed with the white. Margie, bright interior holiday celebration. Two dark figures, lower left, looking into a brightly lit window or getting ready to enter their own home. Or are there bushes? Thank you. Seems like, uh, for me, it seems like there's a, like some party going on over there. <gasps> and they, they, they would like to get in and be part of it. Did you wish this art piece was this or that? And when, where any of this has a spot in your body? Maybe you wished it was in a certain place. And how does that manifest in your body? How do you, do you feel relaxed? Do you feel tense in certain areas? Do you hold your breath? Your breath is, is relaxed and fluid. Okay, I think we are running out of time, noticing my clock. I will share some information about the artist. Maurice Coulin, 
Colin was born in St. John's, Newfoundland. Newfoundland is considered to be one of the first impressionist artists in Canada, especially Claude Monet. He is best known for his painting of snow and for his ice harvest scenes where horse-drawn sleigh travel across the frozen waters of Quebec in the winter. Depicted the Canadian landscape in accordance with local terrain, light and color, he composes his landscape painting and pastels in keeping with European and Canadian tradition. His innovative use of luminous impressionist influenced colors influenced the next generation of Canadian artists, especially the group of seven. For every finished picture, there is an original outdoor sketch, unless it was an occasion when he took an entire canvas with him to complete, to complete out, of, out of doors on the spot. He was fine craftsman and was very careful with the media he used. He seldom used more than eight colors in oil painting because he was wary of the manufactured colors blend. He made his own pastels from earths and other pigments, which he then applied with a minimum of rubbing. He also made his own frames for which he experienced as a sculpture student would have served as a sculpture student as, as served him well. Thank you for uh, joining me today. Going through this experience, how did we feel at the start of it? And how do we feel now? Did we surprise ourselves? Did we discover anything new about ourselves? How would you think your experience would have been different if you were viewing the art in person? And what would you prefer and why? As we come to close, my hope is that by participating in a slow looking and mindfulness workshop, you can continue to give yourself permission to go inward more often, allowing yourself space and permission to respond and connect to your experiences in an authentic ways, knowing that our bodies, movement and sensations can be found everywhere and in everything. We can give them the space and time to speak to us. Connecting to art offers us a way to learn more about ourselves, to support us as we move through this world. There are unlimited ways to explore tension and allows ourselves and allow ourselves to feel. Thank you so much for participating. I appreciate your participation. <laughs>